We should be live now. It should just, the little bar is going across, but we should be streaming at this point across to YouTube. Oh, yeah. Hello, YouTube. It says I'm still in a practice session. Is that right? No. Uh, it's only because I've not started the webinar. I've not let everybody in. So what we, ah, should, what gotcha. we can do at this very point here is, um, yes, we are live. Live. And I can hear myself talking back, so that's called cool. good. So welcome to everybody who's watching on YouTube. But what I will now do is I will start the webinar. We'll start to let people in. Okay, got it. There we go. And you guys are so expert. We're impressed. <laughs> I have no idea at this, but you do this all the time. How long have you guys been online? How, how many sessions have you done like this? Oh, geez. Um, Two this time. At least three. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah no, obviously in 2020, there was a, there was a lot. There was a while, um, yeah. Yeah. But um, we've only had one online this year. So this is our yeah. second one online. Um, it sort of seems a shame to be goes. back online, but we're, hopefully it means we're getting to the end of it, right? As we've opened the borders and oh, yeah. uh, riding the curve. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I do like the face-to-face -face stuff. So hopefully yeah. in a month or two, we'll see. Um, yeah, we just found people were reluctant to actually come out and, and meet. So we figured we'd jump online for a bit. So welcome to everybody that's just come online, the 36 of you. If you want to, it was just to um, kick it off. If you've got a shameless plug, then uh, throw it into the chat window. Uh, if you've got any questions, um, be sure to again, throw that into the, the chat or the questions window for Charlie as we go through this morning. Um, but we'll give it a couple more minutes just to let a few people in uh, and then we'll get started. Got to love a shameless plug. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, I guess we'll do introductions as, as people are coming in. So uh, welcome, everyone. Welcome to Morning Startup. My name is Scott Glue. I'm one of the organisers here along with... My name's Dave. I'm also, I can't really call myself an organiser. Scott, bless him, has been doing all the hard grafting. I just rock up here and uh, show an ugly face in the morning. So, uh, and today we have a great, um, a, a great uh, presenter, Charlie. Charlie Gullingham, you'll know him. Famous Charlie from the scene. And um, he's going to be talking through the innovation graph this morning. But before we get started, are there any shameless plugs or announcements? If so, throw them on into the uh, the chat window. And what we'll do is we'll probably go through the slide deck and then we'll come back to these. Shall we, Scott? Yeah, sounds like a good idea. Absolutely. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, this is your chance, startups of WA. As, as we said, throw your shameless plug in the, in the chat. Uh, but we'd like to thank a couple of organizations for helping us out along the way, organizing Morning Startup every second week. By the way, if you haven't heard of Morning Startup, we do this every two weeks, rain, hail or shine, online or in person, whichever one we can do at the time. Um, and we talk about startup related things. So we'll often have a founder talking about their journey or like we've got today, we've got um, Charlie who's going to take us through the Innovation Booster program uh, if you're looking for funding for your startup. So hopefully you can learn something, usually network with other startup uh, people in Perth and uh, get to know the community. Um, but first up, ammo marketing. We need some jingles. Woo! I don't know. Um, let's grow ammo. Love ammo. On. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, if there's one thing that I want you to do right now, it's go to ammo.marketing, uh, find their weird growth podcast and subscribe to it in your podcast player of choice. It is awesome. They do interviews with founders and startup community people it's really, really entertaining, um, really good. So get on that. And also while you're on ammo.marketing, check out their marketing services. If you want to hit the accelerator on your business and, and really grow, uh, they are an awesome organization helping out a lot of companies here in Perth and WA and the world, I believe. They've even got a Silicon Valley presence. They're on TechCrunch a few weeks ago. Amazing. Yeah, brilliant. All right. Well, now, Beecham Group, uh, if you haven't been to Beecham Group, you've been on The Rock. Beecham Group, Glenn & Co, a boutique recruitment company here in Perth, massive advocates of the startup and uh, uh, tech scene here in, in WA. Um, if you are looking for that new job, um, and again, you probably wouldn't have too much hassle in finding a new job in today's market, but check out Glenn and the team. And if you are looking for uh, staff, um, or you're looking for some advice, speak to Glenn and they'll be more than happy to help you. 
Absolutely. And a few other very supportive organizations of the startup community here in Perth. Obviously, Space Cubed, where we're usually doing this, is at RIF, but they've got a range of places down St. Brody's Terrace or St. George's Terrace. Um, they've got RIF, they've got Flux, they've got Fern. So if you need a place to work, there's no better place than uh, Startup Central. They've got awesome spaces. They've got great communities, great programs going on. So get out of that home office and go and work at one of their places once or twice or five times a week. Brilliant. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you check out Startup News, startupnews.com.au. Um, it is for those of you who find yourself getting slightly disconnected from the startup scene like myself, um, as you grow your business, um, check out Startup News. It's kind of where everything's at for WA startups. Um, it, every Friday, you'll get a nice email in your inbox that explains who's who in the zoo here in WA and who's raising and what's going on. And so I, I personally love, it's one of the one emails I love during the week. So I just got to say a big kudos to all the team out there for doing it. It is a um, great read every week. Absolutely. Uh, if you haven't heard of Plus 8, I'm going to do Plus 8 at the announcements because I know they've just launched something. But if you haven't heard of Plus 8... Do it now, Dave. I don't think I've got a slide for announcements anymore. Oh, you're not. <laughs> um, if you haven't heard of Plus 8, Plus 8 is W's own, uh, WA's very own uh, accelerated program. There's two parts of it. You've got um, Plus 8 Sprint, if I'm right, and then Plus 8, the actual accelerator itself. So for those of you who've got a great idea and maybe got a little bit of traction would like to get some great mentoring from some, some um, world-leading uh, mentors, then check out Plus 8 and go and register for their new accelerator. You can get up to half a... I think there's about half a million dollars worth of funding in it. Obviously, you're not going to get the full half a million. It's split between the cohort. But I understand that applications have just opened. So I really look forward to seeing, again, another super high caliber of... Um, a cohort of startups coming through um, the program this year. So I'm slightly gutted actually. If you ever made their video, they stole my music. I was right. I was there's a, they put some backing music to it. And I was like, oh damn it, they've used that stuff that I was going to use on the project. But um, oh, that's my so music you wrote. <laughs> yes, <laughs> through uh, your own jingle. It's, a, it's a piece of music that's on obviously art, the art list or some of the, the free. Right, ones. Okay. No, a really good, good video though. They've done a really good job. Oh yeah, amazing! Yeah. Literally amazing. It's like really good video. It's like inspiring. You just want to go out and do a startup. <laughs> it's amazing. Exactly. No, it's it is great. So yeah, check In out Perth as well. Yeah, it's Very it's good. almost like just on that. It's like the video is as inspiring. You kind of you. I'm not saying that we can't in here in WA do that kind of caliber stuff, but it's like it's world leading. It does make mm. it make it put us on the stage. It really does. So whoever yeah. made, I think it was Josh that made the video. Um, so. Oh, yeah. Big kudos. Big Jack's kudos. just put a link to it in the uh, Zoom chat. Thanks for that, Jack. Uh, if you want to go and check it out. Oh, by the way, um, if you are commenting in the chat, just make sure you select uh, everyone in the two field. Just don't just go to um, panelists and whatever the op option is. Host well, that's what I did. Oh, dear. Okay. <laughs> Charlie says, morning, everyone, if you missed it. Uh, okay, cool. Um, oh, Voltage Espresso. Usually we're at Riff. Um, go grab yourself a coffee at Voltage and tell them Morning Startup sent you. Um, and we'll be back there soon enough. So we'd like to give them a nice plug. And techboard.com.au. Make sure you go there and claim your company's profile. Um, they have an investor heavy focused audience. So it's particularly good if you are raising money. They also put out a bunch of stats about um, startup activity across Australia. So uh, yeah, subscribe to Techboard and, and get their news. All right. Uh, any other announcements or anything else we need to mention? Uh, here, other, than, other than the biggest one being plus eight starting. Yeah. I'm not sure where the, do you know where, Charlie, you're the man in the know. Do you know when the boot camp is going to be for that? Sorry, what's that? In the boot camp for plus eight is. Do you know when that is? I don't know, no. Okay, we'll find no. out. We'll put it out. Obviously later. not invited this year. <laughs> yeah, that was last year. <laughs> Um, great. There's a, there is a shameless plug there, Scott. There's a few, actually, just looking a bit here. There's one here from a pair show for you. I said your name right. Um, shameless plug, luxury lifestyle platform that they're developing where you can list luxury electric cars and experiences for real people to rent from one day to one year. If you're interested, check out rplife.co. Um, rplife.co. It's got a ring to it. Um, another shameless plug here to go and follow a company called Sport4. 
Uh, it is on LinkedIn. Uh, the the uh, CIS Grassroots Sports with Australian made AI technology. And, um, Tom has put a link to their LinkedIn profile in the chat. So scroll up and you will see it. Uh, any other shout for? Just cool. scrolling down applications in four days. Oh, Energy Lab, Gary, thank you very much. I knew nothing about this. So um, I will double check it. And but if you, I'm assuming it's something to do with energy in some form. <laughs> energy, energy Lab energy. programs acceleration sounds oh, like. Oh, yeah, climate, climate yeah, cool. solutions. Perfect. Calling the most ambitious climate tech founders. Okay. So if you're interested in solving problems in um, the climate area, then go and check out the link that um, was put energylab.org for people that can't see the link. There's a shameless plug for Gene as well. A bit early in the morning, but I like that plug. Yes. Brilliant. Any more? Morning, morning. Shameless plug. Whist, oh, it's Wandering Distillery. West Up Tuckerbush collaborated with Wandering Distillery. To, just, ugh, I've not had a few this morning. Distillery to win a gold medal. Oh, can we, oh gin. Definitely. I'll be there. Wandering. Go to wanderingdistillery.com.au. Find out more. Perfect. All right. Shameless plugs. Um, Raise intellectual property. Happy to help with the wording to apply for the IP category of your applications together. Thank you. Uh, that's Hogan, clever. Rose. That's clever. That's a clever shameless plug. <laughs> uh, why in my presentation, if you haven't got that one. Nice uh, one, Julia. And then just one here from uh, Safira, just Safira uh, online speechy teaching parents to get their little one talking at home. And again, there's a link there. So thank you very much everyone that posted a shameless plug. And Justin right. Davis just put in clean sh cleanplant.com as well. Can I put in a shameless plug? Some of you may be wondering where the Startup West podcast has got to. We always finish with a live mm. show down at um, Frio Startup Fest in the incredibly hot sonar room there, Little Creatures. Um, it is going to be back again. They're actually recording the first uh, two interviews this Friday. Um, the amazing Brody McCulloch is going to be a co-host um, awesome. with Danelle Cross still. And um, also we're bringing in Steve Elias from RSM. Um, I've obviously had to step away from that. I can't do any media stuff apart from things like this um, with my new job. So I handed over Startup News to the team and also Startup West to the great new co-hosts. So it is going to crank up again. Obviously, after you've listened to Ammo Marketing's Weird Growth Cast, growth, what growth Podcast, you can go and listen to Startup West. It'll be out in about a week. I think a week today will be the first um, new episode for 2022. Excellent. That's good to hear. That's uh, another awesome podcast I listen to all the time. Very cool. Uh, all right. Well, um, look, the, start, the shameless plugs are still coming in. I think there's going to be way too many for us to, to keep announcing here, but uh, feel free to keep throwing them in there. Um, if you want to reach out to us, we're always looking for presenters. As I said, we do this every two weeks. Uh, so if you've got something with Perth or the WA startup community, we'd love to hear. Just reach out to us. We are morning startup on all of the things. Um, Except for TikTok. We don't have TikTok, Dave. And I know you like to dance in front of your camera. So that's really weird. Because we're over 25, mate. <laughs> yeah, that's why. So we should sure. probably do TikTok. Yeah. All right. But look, um, I think we'll get into the main event. So the man that needs no introduction, but I'm going to give him one anyway while he works out how to share his screen, um, is Charlie Gunningham. I'll tell you, what, I'll stop sharing my screen so you can. Um, so as he's mentioned, he's got. Well, he's a Perth startup legend. He sold his company, Aussie Homes, to Rewa back in the day, and he's been helping out the Perth startup community ever since through all of his roles from CEO of Business News to accelerating commercialization grants uh, for the government and his own personal ventures as well. But his latest new job is Director of Innovation, I believe, at the Department of Jobs, Tourism, Science and Innovation. And he's going to tell us all about the Innovation Booster Grants, which used to be called the Innovation Vouchers. Um, and it's a very competitive process. I believe the way you get one of the 20 is by doing some like death defying challenges, but I could be wrong. So he's going to set the record straight and tell you all about it. Please make him welcome, Charlie. Thanks, guys. And thanks for what you've done. How many years has Perth Morning Startup been going? You, you guys have been running it for a while, I know, but um, fantastic. Well, 10, over 10 years now. Yeah, but you guys specifically, when did you guys take over? You've done a huge job. Scott was a start. He started in late 2011, was it? Or was it? Yeah, 2011 yeah. when I started Fast. And then I plugged it off to the States for three and a half years where you guys took it over. And then you dragged me back into it when I came back. 
Yes. <laughs> I've, I'll be nine years this year. Okay. 2000, 2013, I started. Sorry. Cool. Um, I'm going to stop sharing this because I see I've got um, I've got a um, version which has got an automatic. I've got the wrong version, so I'll redo it. I'll go to a PDF version. They're much easier, aren't they? They don't have um, stupid things on them. So just talk amongst yourselves while I sort that out. Um, I might just do a quick couple of those shameless plugs. Then in please case. do, yeah. So then I'll go from the bottom up because I can't think which one it was. So there's uh, Andy Hagen to Shameless Blood, Luma Living Startup Building uh, Startup. <laughs> Haven't had enough coffee today. <laughs> housing for people with disabilities. And uh, Tan Hauser, hopefully.com.au, Secure Your Startup Cybersecurity Consultancy. Uh, shameless plug here. Test your latest project on the mobile devices. Give them a shout. Assure it at appspeople.com.au. Any more shameless plugs? Ah, oh, this one here. Don't, it sounds interesting. Um, shameless plug. Don't forget to bring your beer clips back to your nearest bottle shop. Um, and that's donutwaste.com.au forward slash beer hyphen can. Donut waste. I love it. Sharka. She's great. Yeah, she was a curtain ignition last year. Hi, Sharka. I actually have a stack of beer clips this high. Um, sorry, that talks to my yeah. own personal drinking habits. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I need to get rid of them. All right. Rock and roll. Uh, first, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land in which we're meeting today, the Wadjuk people of Noongar Nation, and pay our respects to elders past, present, and emerging. Yeah, my name's Charlie Gunningham. I've been, uh, since January the 24th, Director of Innovation at Jitsi, which basically means I run the New Industries Fund with my wonderful team. And um, it's really good. It's really interesting being inside state government. I've not been inside state government before. thought I'd give it a go when I saw this job advertised last year. You'd probably know the NIF. It's a $16.7 million commitment through now to, it's now been funded for the second iteration. It is an election commitment, so the government has to do it. And um, it's through till J July, 2025. Um, and there's some photos of some companies you may recognize in WA that have taken advantage of various programs of the NIF. But basically we're about new and emerging businesses, as it says on the tin, new industries fund and about startups, which is the bit that I like. Um, the Innovation Booster Grant, yes, yeah, Scott said has had a rename. Um, the, I, I never really liked the name Innovation Voucher Program. Um, and it's not a program, so it's a grant. So let's call it a grant. And then we went to the minister with a few different names and he chose this one. Uh, one of the one of the ones I had was um, our team had was Booster Innovation Grant or Boost Innovation Grant because then we could call it the Notorious B.I.G. Didn't quite go with that, or go big. Um, <laughs> but Innovation Booster Guide is probably the right name for it, and that's what we now call it. But don't expect Innovation Voucher Program as well or any more. This has replaced it, okay? But it's pretty similar um, in sort of 90, 95% the same as uh, what you've known from Innovation Voucher Program. Basically, if you've not heard of it before, the idea is to give WA startups a boost to their innovation capability, give them a little bit of money, 20 grand, up to a maximum 20 grand cash. Uh, and then it's a 2080 um, co-contribution. So unlike accelerating commercialization, which you knew I worked on for a few years ago uh, with Larry Lopez and Cheryl, that's a 50% co-contribution. This is just a 20% co-contribution, cash, not in-kind cash. You have to put up something, right? But if you want the full 20 grand, then you're putting up five grand. Um, but you don't have to go for the full 20 grand. And the idea is then you can spend that money on, a on preferably a local provider to do something like build an MVP or yeah, get a patent done or whatever it is that you're like a sizable project that will get you somewhere, right? Get to that in a minute. So that's what we're talking about. The program is now open for applications. Firstly, eligibility. This is the first thing um, my team will look at. I don't judge it and my team don't judge it, but we do judge eligibility. So we'll knock out ones that aren't eligible. So, you know, you've done, you've started an application, but you haven't finished it, or you're not a WA company or whatever. So you have to be registered in WA, you have to have a current ABN or ACN, and you have to be developing an innovative project in WA, which you're going to describe in your application. It's all done online. You can go back and edit. Even after you've submitted your application, which is not due until 20th of April, you can go back and change it and edit it as many times as you like. And I would really urge you to start as early as possible. We've already had a lot of people start their applications and some have already submitted them. 
but you, we won't actually pull them down until the 20th of April, 11 a.m. So you're developing an innovative project. A lot of you on this call will be doing that. All power to you. You will continue to be based in WA in the next three years. You have to say that you're going to be doing that. You're not going to be jetting off somewhere. You've got to be a solvent business. Um, we used to be an innovation program up to 200 staff. 200 staff is a big company. We've reduced that to 50 staff. And businesses will contribute at least 2080. Okay. So that's eligibility. A bit more on that. The IBG is not going to be spent on normal operational business as usual expenses. With the, the money is to be spent on this new innovative project that you're doing. And you do it with a chosen independent third party service provider. So your app provider or your tech guys that are going to build you some code or your IP lawyer who's going to do a patent for you or whatever it is, or your consultant who's going to come in and do a commercialization or marketing uh, program for you. Uh, that is an independent third party. And they have to state that they are an independent third party. You don't own a part of them. They are independent, right? So um, you're not feathering your own nest in that, in that respect. And this is for future spending, not stuff you have spent on. In fact, you can't spend your grant if you get it until you've been awarded the grant. So, and that won't be till July. So we're talking about a project that's going to be in the new financial year. So you've got to, from July this year till June next year to spend your IBG. It can't be something you're already working on or you're halfway through or something like that. And um, obviously not previously received or likely to receive the WA state government funding for the same project. And you've not previously received an innovation booster grant for the same project. Um, they used to be called, of course, no one's had an innovation booster grant. What we mean there is you haven't had an innovation voucher program for the same project. And obviously you've got to submit your um, application prior to the closing date. So that's eligibility. So if you're still on the call and you're eligible, keep listening. I will get on to um, what's eligible expenditure. I sort of hinted at this before. So not BAU. There are four categories. These are the same as they were last year and a few years before. So you're doing some R&D, some technical development. You're building something or you're going to get something tested or getting a proof of concept or something like that or your product development. So you're doing some design work or developing a prototype or building an MVP, or you're doing some tech transfer and IP. So, you know, you just need to get a patent. You know, that's what you need. That's the last piece um, for you to go to your market or whatever. And maybe you can spend your money on that. Or you need some commercialization support. So, you know, we're well aware that there's loads of great ideas out there but how do we transfer them into commercialization, get them to customers? There are some people around who can help you with that. And this grant can be paid for that. So not normal marketing and build a normal website, but something where you've got innovative project and these people can come in and really help you. Your funding request, so whatever you're, let's say you're asking for 25,000 total, that must equal the estimated cost of your project. And you need to confirm that you're going to be able to Contribute 20% of that. Um, this is GST exclusive, so you've got to pay any GST on top. Sorry about that. Um, and you're going to work on the project after the execution of a financial assistance agreement with the state government. So we don't do retrospective funding, as I mentioned earlier. Funding successful um, applicants will be available from the 1st of July after the announcement, which will probably be end of June. And funds should be spent by the end of next year. So basically, it's for a project you're thinking of doing in the, in the new financial year. So if you think about it, applications are due 20th of April. There's obviously going to be a judging process. Um, there's a lot of people apply for this. That's all, that takes a while. Um, I don't do the judging. I'm not involved. Don't hit me up. <laughs> you don't know who the judges are, but they're very, very good people who give their time willingly and for free to do this, bless their cotton socks. Um, and they spend a lot of time sifting through a lot of applications to find the ones we're going to back. Um, but that's the gig, right? Now, eligible, ineligible expenditure. No, we won't give money for training courses or just salaries of existing staff or just standard hardware, software purchases. 
um, or just normal business and strat planning or designing of your marketing brochures, unless it's demonstrated that specifically for some this new innovative project and commercialization pathway, um, maintenance and upkeep facilities, no other operational businesses. You get the idea, right? It's for your, think of it as a, like a bite-sized project around 25 grand or less, or more. If it's more than that, you have to pay the extra, um, but it's for that project. So I, I like to think like we don't really back companies, we back projects. So think about a really good, interesting, innovative project that will you know, create WA jobs, help diversify the economy, move you to that next level. I always like to think of a founder um, who maybe just needs to get an MVP built. You know, they, They've been humming and hawing about it for a while. They, this can really get them to an MVP, get them in front of customers, and maybe see if there's something there, if there's revenues. All right, you need to then have your service provider or service providers, I haven't said on the slide, actually you can have up to three service providers. I mean, it can, can be a bit complicated, but a maximum of three, it's certainly simple if you just have one service provider on your application. It can be a public funded, can be a not-for-profit, private owned company, all right? Um, preferably based in WA, doesn't have to be. You could choose a company outside WA if there is a specific reason for that, like you cannot get these services in West Australia, but it is preferable that your service provider is based in WA. So whoever is building your app or developing your code or doing your patent, preferably based in WA. And you have to attach their quote to your application, which needs to match, of course, the um, amount of money you're asking for. So when you up, so it does take, there's quite a few things to line up here. Um, and that includes getting your service provider, your chosen provider, you go out and choose that today or over the next few weeks to get a quotation for the project, which will then be uploaded with your application. As mentioned, this service provider must be an independent third party. Um, you can't, it can't have any financial or other ties to your company. And to confirm this, they need to sign a following statement either in that quotation or as a separate letter. This is to confirm that I'm an independent third party, blah, 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 All right? And then their quotation, it must obviously contain their business name, have a contact person, ABN, ACN. Um, we may very well ring them up to check that they exist and that they're gonna be doing this project for you and they've done this quote. It must be addressed to your company and have your contact details listed. It must be dated on or after the 9th of March, 2022, which was the opening date of the IPG. It must have an ind indicated price range until or time frame valid for the quote and have a detailed description of the work to be undertaken and must have that third party declaration. So that's your service provider quotation, who is preferably a WA based SP and they will up you will upload their quote just a one page, that's fine. Maybe a letter that says they're independent. Upload them as a PDF, say. There's places to do that in the back of the application. Those of you who've done it before, like me, I've, I've been involved in a couple of um, innovation voucher program applications. Both didn't get up, by the way. Um, you have to, you, there are places to do that at the back of the application. All right, tips. You know, some of you may know I'm a former school teacher. I was an economics teacher in England, Singapore, and Australia before I came to Perth. And what always used to break my heart when I know the student understood their stuff was when I read their essay or read their exam, and I knew they knew this stuff, but they'd wandered off in a completely different direction because they hadn't read the question and they hadn't answered the question. And it used to break my heart because I couldn't actually give them very high scores because they'd gone and talked about something completely different to what the question had asked probably because they were nervous because some people don't do well in exams and they start rattling down anything. Oh, I'm writing stuff, so I must be doing well. And um, they're writing about something irrelevant. So please take your time to read the application. There are really only five evaluation criteria. They're pretty well explained. Any questions you can ask us, there's an email I'll show at the end. Please read the guidelines. Consider this as whether you're really going to be competitive whether it's going to be worth your time because it is going to take a bit of time. And when you've put your application in, try and forget about it and just get on with your business. If you win the grant, great. If you don't, life moves on. It's just, you know, part of the rich tapestry of human existence. Right? 
Make the application concise, comprehensive, and clear. Think about these panel judges who have got to read a lot of these. How is yours going to stick out and be the ones that is like almost dare them not to back it? But don't say that exactly. But you know what I mean? Like dare, but when you're pitching for money, almost dare people, investors, not to invest in you. Um, make it convincing. No jargon, please. Doesn't help. And if you've got acronyms, explain what the acronyms are and check everything's uploaded correctly. You know, if I was you, um, I would get everything uploaded like a week before and like read it through. And then you don't spot your own mistakes. Get a couple of people to read your application that maybe don't understand your technology necessarily or don't know you, don't know exactly what you're doing. Is it clear to them, like a, a third party person? Get them to read it. I didn't understand this bit. What do you mean by that? And then you can, even after you've submitted it, keep making changes to it up until the deadline. Please don't leave it to the last minute. I know some people like to go, hey, man, I was, did an all-nighter. Wow. You know, it was like I got Red Bull and I did it all night. Don't leave it to the last minute. Do it early. As I say, try and get it a week before and spend that last week just polishing it if you need to. And then forget about it. Um, you use a system called the Good Grant System. Another reason to do it early is if you're all trying to get it in the end, right, dog ate my homework and other useful excuses, printer doesn't work. Um, it could be that the whole system becomes overloaded. So I would absolutely get it in early and not leave it till 10.59 a.m. on the 20th of April, right? Point made? Okay, cool. Come down off my high horse now. All right, how do we, um, or how does the team judge it? If your application is found to be eligible, right, you've ticked all those eligibility boxes, some might get knocked out for ineligibility. Then it goes off to the panel. And um, this one is different. This one is slightly different to um, previously. And the reason is pretty obvious, if, I, if you let me explain it, need for funding. This used to be called funding, and we've changed it to need for funding, which is something I brought in from Accelerating Commercialization, which I quite liked, actually, is we're trying to help the people Seriously, we're trying, honestly, we're trying to help the people where we think this will have the most impact, right? So if you've just raised $3 million, it's unlikely you're going to get an uh, innovation booster grant, right? You've raised $3 million. Why do you want 20 grand? We want the 20 grand to go somewhere where it will make the biggest impact. Make the biggest impact. So you've really got to explain why your project deserves funding um, how it will address the financial need, you know, why you've got this gap in funding, why this project deserves funding, and why you cannot fund this yourself. And they're the ones we're looking for, where this will make the Im impact and where they have tried to raise the money, got a really good idea and got a valid reason why they can't. Um, and this will really help push them to that next level. That's what we're looking for, okay? So make that clear in need for funding. Two, level of impact. How will this make an impact? Now, it's, it's difficult to judge, of course, and to prove. Um, and you don't want to make wild claims, but we are looking for ones where we believe, you know, this is the whole point of Diversify WA and the New Industries Fund and the, um, the whole job strategy of the WA government, which is in our department in JITSI, it is all about diversifying the economy, jobs, tourism, science, innovation. So how is this, in its own sweet, small way, going to lead to that? Help diversify the economy, benefits for WA, jobs, income growth, maybe future capital raises. How is this going to de deliver tangible benefits for future customers and end users? All right? Those are the sort of impact and changes we're looking for. So how is this little project going to do that in its own sweet way? Capability and capacity, this is you have the ability and capacity and time to use the service provider services to advance your innovation. So you're going to commit to this. Competitive advantage, your innovation has a competitive advantage in the market. You've screened the market. I've met so many, I've met so many founders who think they've got no competition. There is no such thing as no competition. Have you done a real proper competitive landscape screen? Who are your competitors? Why does yours have an advantage? 
and some unfair advantage, some special secret source that you've got that's going to lift you and lift this project and get this to where you want it to be, where you believe it can be. And collaboration, demonstrate why you need this specialist service provider and why your chosen provider will meet this demand. Okay, clear? Those are the five criteria. You'll see them on the application form. Almost near the end, and I'm happy to have any questions. Um, the deadline is, as I've said, and flagged, and we cannot accept any late comers, sorry. 20th of April, 2022. So what is it today? It's the 16th of March. So that's about five weeks away. 11 a.m., not 5 p.m., not midnight, 11 a.m. Get it in the day before, the week before, the weekend before, no extensions. That's it, all right? Um, further information, any questions you've got, there's an email we've specially set up for this, innovationbooster at jitsi.wa.gov.au. You can jump on the platform now or today and just set yourself up with a, um, an account at innovationbooster.grantplatform.com, right? And then you can just work away at it. You can look through all the things you need to do. You can stick in the name of your company, find your ABN, get all that done, you know, in the first few days, and then maybe make a list of the things you've got to gather together, like that service provider quotation and everything else. Um, no doubt service providers out there on the call will be running around getting their startups to apply. Um, fair enough. Um, and maybe helping them with the application. So we use the good grant system. And when does it get announced? Uh, announced by email by the end of June. So everyone who has put an application, you'll be told whether you have got the um, grant or not by the end of June. So it's not too long a wait. You know, so we're talking about six weeks, really, um, sort of end of April, and we've got to judge the and read them all and, and have various meetings and get that announcement and um, goes up to the minister for endorsement. And then the minister, of course, will announce shortly after you know that who the winners are. And might come out as they've done in the past and meet one of you and have a bit of a photo call and a doorstep and a bit of media. Obviously, the decision is final. We can't argue as to why you did or didn't get it. Um, due to confidentiality, we can't give feedback on the panel's deliberations. There's the email for any questions. Um, I want to wish you all the best, not just for the application, but everyone on the call and everyone who applies, you know, thank you. Thank you for the innovation you're doing, the work you're doing. You are the rock stars. You are. Um, not the people with money, the innovators are. Um, and I want to wish you all the best. There's the email. There's the web address for NIF. And if you go on to that, wa.gov.au NIF, you'll find the link to Innovation Booster. I didn't put the Innovation Booster URL down. It's so blooming long. It's ridiculous. But you'll find it there if you go to NIF and go to programs and go Innovation Booster or just Google Innovation Booster NIF or something. Innovation Booster at Jitsi will go to my wonderful staff and they'll answer your questions. And now I'm happy to take any of your questions. Um, some of you may want to ask about the Investment Attraction Fund, a $100 million fund, which was announced on the same day as I announced my little Innovation Booster grant. That was interesting timing. Um, that's from a different part of Jitsi. I don't run the Innovation Attraction Fund, but I do know something about it. So I can maybe point you to the guidelines or answer any general questions about that. That's obviously a different thing altogether. That's up to $5 million you can apply for. That's also open now. Uh, and that's $5 million um, matching grant. Right. Okay. Much, well, thank you, Charlie. That was uh, that was good. Very clear. I see we've got a bunch of questions coming into the chat. Um, I was wondering, Dave, should we try something different? If you want to ask your question in person, use the little raise hand uh, thing in Zoom. You can put your hand up, and I think Dave, you should be able to like promote them to a panelist, and you can actually ask your question rather than typing into the chat. But the, look, there's a ton of questions in the chat, so let's. Uh, Let's go through them. I'll go keep my slides point. up in case I need to go back to them. <laughs> Here's a question there, which I did send back to Gary privately. But again, I'll just get you to put the official one on it because I may be wrong in the terms of your your uh, 
your reply, but basically if a company only has zero employees, e.g. it's only got the director, can they still apply? Because it says in the slide that you have to have one employee. Yeah, that's a good question. I believe so, but I would just, um, that's a good question, Gary, thanks. Um, me being new, I can plain, I can, I can say ignorance on that one specific. That's a really good question. Um, I believe so, but I would just flick an email to Innovation Booster at Jitsi to confirm that. Okay. Uh, Andrew says, when it says staff, can directors not on PAYG pay, pay count towards staff? Two minutes of the first question. Sort of the same question, I think. Yeah, I believe okay. so, yes. I, I believe so. I think directors do count. Directors, in, in as far as ASIC is concerned, and payroll and that do count as, as staff. Correct. I think they do, yeah. Right. That's a good. Um, that's a good qualification question. Whack an email in, get a reply. There's one here from Claire. The independent party. Do they need to be West Australian, or can they be someone from over east or overseas? Egypt? Preferably WA based. If there's a good reason that you cannot find your service provider in WA, then they can be from over east. I don't think they can be from overseas, but maybe that's a qualification question to send in by email. Sorry, I don't know all the answers. I'm very new. <laughs> no worries. I was, I was looking at that page on your slide deck, actually. It said, um, said WA preferred, but it did yes. say um, overseas as long as there's a good reason. Um, did it say overseas? But I, yeah, I think it was in there. Go back. You keep going. <laughs> there we go. Did it say overseas? Oh, it does say overseas. Oh, yeah, overseas okay. SP. So it has would, to be a um, very good reason to use overseas. You cannot find the provider in the whole of Australia. Wow. True. Well, what if they're super expensive, like say developers, and you know you can get a lot more from an overseas development <laughs> company? I'm not going to that. answer that one. Yeah. <laughs> There's a question well. there from um, Josh. In fact, I'm just going to put it another way rather than the way that Josh has asked it. Um, how many applications, obviously this is opened up now, how many applications do you anticipate to get? Yeah, I, I can't say, but I mean, there are, we are many, 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 many times oversubscribed, which imagine. is, you know, sad in a way, because there's going to be some really good ones we can't back. And it's also sad because doesn't that tell us about the lack of funding in the sector? You know, yeah. 20 grand shouldn't be that hard to get. It's, it's, you know, I'm working on it guys, but yeah. yeah. If you want more than that, I, you know, push you off to the IAF where you can get up to $5 million for big juicy projects, you know, that's just mm -hmm. been announced. And it's not often that the WA government announces a hundred million dollar fund and you can get $5 million. I mean, that, what an amazing announcement, um, which rather dwarfed my little announcement, innovation booster grant, anybody? <laughs> but anyway, we're at a different end of the scale, right? And uh, a very important part of the scale, very early stage. Yeah. I mean, for the IAF, I think you need to have three years trading experience and, Obviously, you've got to have the matching facility as well. And um, this, this is very much aimed at the sort of start and end of town, startup end of town. So there's a question here again from... But, I mean, I just need... So it is highly competitive. You need to consider, you know, that risk reward of all the time spent to put an application in for what is only 20 grand, but we want to find people we can really help make a difference. So I generally urge people who think they've got something good and competitive to put an application in it, it you know applying for even um grants and sometimes awards i did a lot of it when i was a startup founder and it does help you sort of summarize your business in a nice neat way and maybe think of things you hadn't thought of or hadn't thought about that is that that in itself the process is good without overselling it to go through the process but no you don't just rock up and get a grant it's not like that yeah yeah that's a good point <clears throat> Is, uh, so what are the most common kinds of successful expenditure? Gary asks. Do you have an idea on that? Again, I'm new, so I don't know. Um, but um, I've have I had a look at the valuation over the last few years, and most are for building an MVP. So um, around about half or just over half are building something. Um, or it's, you know, using a commercialization partner or a patent um, those are the typical sort of applications. So there's a question, there's a good segue into this next one from Safira. The eligible expenditure categories and examples seem very physical focused, physical product focused. Is that what you're looking for or is it just as interest in innovative apps or software? 
So are you looking at more hardware based? Stuff? No, not at all. No, if that came across like that, um, and we try and cover everything, right? Um, but you no, know, hardware, hardware, software, they, we're agnostic completely. We're no, just trying to cover everything in those descriptions. If they were a little bit hardware heavy, that's not an intent that we're definitely looking for hardware, not at all. Yeah. Yeah, looking for great projects with work. good founders that have a competitive market where 20 grand can make the most impact or 25 grand can make the most impact. Cool. So question here from C. C, I'd love to, you've been here multiple times. I'd love to know who C is. Do you have any other letters to Who is C? Who is C? It's like M. Do you work for MI6 maybe? <laughs> uh, what's the nature of confidentiality stroke transparency of application contents to the public? It's a good question. Oh, completely confidential. So all the panelists have to sign confidentiality agreements. My staff are obviously on strict confidentiality agreements. So nothing gets, your application is completely confidential. No, no one knows who's applied and none of that information um, is published anywhere. The, the only thing that does get published are the winners and a short description of those recipients. Uh, and some of them might end up in media releases and be interviewed and get all that good stuff. And then at that stage, they can say whatever they want about their project should they want to share. So that's a good, a good reason to get and a good um, opportunity to get some media extension, media um, and PR, should you win one of these things. Uh, well, Rebecca asks, can your own SME be the service provider if it's you no. that provide the service? No. So you've got to be an independent third party. Very, very clear. Okay. Cool. All right. Any more questions? I got, a, I got a question for you, Charlie. Is there any industries that you're particularly focused on, you're particularly interested in, or is it very generic across board? Agnostic, industry agnostic. So the eligibility criteria are the eligibility criteria. No, we're in there. Unlike the IAF, I think the IAF Investment Attraction Fund has eight industry specific sectors, such as, you know, I think it is, um, I'm going to get them wrong now, but I think. Ag tech and biotech and stuff like that. Yeah, I think life sciences is one and is, is it and tourism is another and defense is another and uh, et cetera. Um, no, there's no industry specific here. We're not looking for particular industries. We're looking for great founders with good projects we can help genuinely. Um, yeah. One question I've got is if you're planning or have done the R&D tax benefit grant thing, uh, is can you still apply for this as well? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And most people would have both, wouldn't they? If they, most, most people, I, I'd imagine most people on your call and people interested in this would probably be claiming that. Yeah. They'd by definition, be doing R&D and innovative things and probably claiming it. Because there was something in the deck about if you've already received a grant of some description. then For the same there. project. For the same project. Okay. For the exact same project. Um, so if that? you are claiming the R&D tax for that same project. That's so. This, 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 this is the point. I've not previously received or like receive a WA state government funding for the right. same project. R and D tax is federal government, cool. Aus industry, uh, and have not previously received innovation booster grant or IVP for the same project. Awesome. People can also. I don't know if it, people can also. This question came up yesterday that was emailed in. They can actually put in multiple applications. So you might have a couple of projects from the same organization um you must really like filling out forms if you want to do that but that's we don't we don't say you can't do that yeah wow well, okay it is quite a lot of work for 20 grand I, I do admit that i've done it myself a couple of times and been unsuccessful both times you know it is competitive and then you, you see the list of people and you go why did they get it you know don't yep. be that small-minded person like i was i'm sure you're not <laughs> you're a bigger, bigger person um, but uh, it is the only opportunity at the moment that that my little group can give startups money. Um, well, I've got a question for you. Have you got? Let's let's maybe talk about the other side of the um, process. Like, do you know um, any great stories that you could share? Because it would be really good if you if you knew any of those stories. From yeah. The that um, you know have gone on to. I guess there's a couple of pitches that you had who had received it in the past. Yeah, I mean Terra Fifteen. They got an innovation voucher a few years ago. They then went on and got an AC grant. I think they've raised about two and a half million since. I've got like twenty staff. 
I'm not saying the innovation voucher did that, but it was part of their journey, right? Yeah. Um, Matthew there from Social Analytics got an IVP as well. He's now up at 30 staff. These are from about 2017, so this is a while ago. And then Vital Trace, they won an innovation voucher grant. Um, a few years ago, they went on to win WA Innovator of the Year last year, which also attracted some prize money. They've got about 15 staff. So they've, they've come from about two or three staff when they applied for the IVP or IVG. And then now it's sort of 20, 30, then, it, you know, you could probably call them small, medium enterprises now or small businesses. And they're on their way. And they've, they've each raised a few million dollars. I know Matthew has and the guys at Terra 15 have. I remember meeting, meeting them, Terra 15, when they were down at Seri. And they've now got their own nice little offices on the terrace, I think, or well, down Adelaide Terrace anyway. I think there's been, um, I think I'm right in saying, because about 20 normally are given away every year. I think in 2020, 36 were handed out because it was COVID. So they saw it as a way of getting more money out quite quickly out the door. Um, so I think there's been um, just under 200 innovation voucher grants given out. And around about $2 million, or was that $4 million? No, just under $4 million, I think, over the years, um, because it's about $400,000 a year. And I think the program's been running in various phases since about 2011 with different names. Yeah. Cool. So there's a question that's come in from Sammy in regards to if the project or the art research and development fail on the way, then what are the consequences do you, you know, obviously if they fail midway through, I'm assuming Sammy here that you kind of get the grant, but you fail as a result or something like that. Depends what you mean by failure. We know that we're investing in the very early stage, right? Now, um, we sure there's no fraud involved here. There is no project, you know. Um, that did come up once in accelerating commercialization. The person was sued and they had to give the money back. Um, that was pretty dramatic, but that was over like, there were 400 plus grants given out and that only happened once, but the guy was a fraud. Um, they never actually had a project, I think. Um, in this case, you know, we know some things don't quite work out and I think we'll just assess it at the time, you know, um, how things have gone. You go into something of the reasonable best intentions and done, something doesn't work out. You know, that's, that's the gig of startup life, right? It doesn't always start burn out. Um, mm. We will try and assess the ones that, we think have got the best chance, got the best building blocks, the best founders. They seem to have their ducks in a row and we'll give them a shot. Uh, and hopefully, you know, all of them are successful. They may not all be successful. Not everyone that's got an innovation voucher program in the past still exists. That's just the gig, right? We know that. Yeah. You don't have to pay Getting the up back. in the day, getting smashed in the head and go, hit me again. And we get up the next day and get smashed in the head and go, hit me again. And we do that for year after year. Bless our cotton socks, everyone on the call. That's why I say the innovators are the heroes, right? Certainly the ones with concussion, anyway. <laughs> um, Andrew, I hope I'm going to get your question right here. Um, he says, are there any logical next steps that should be demonstrated? E.g., MVP is still minimal. What next? Uh, should this all be mapped out or is it okay to have an agile approach? That's a really, really intelligent question. Um, and, I, and I think if you're putting it that way, that makes it quite interesting and persuasive. So um, there, is, there is no right answer to that. I think it really depends on the project. And, um, you know, probably a hint at where you're going is a good idea and that you've, you've thought about it and there's a strategy and a roadmap and this will help you get there and that this is an important piece in the puzzle because it's only a, we're only talking up to a maximum, you know, likely 25 grand piece, but this is an important piece and, and persuade us to say, yep, we're going to give you this piece to get you that next, next step. But we realize it's just a next step. It's not the end. You know, 25 grand, hey, I've made it. Let's go. Let's celebrate down at Como the Treasury and have expensive beers. No, it's not. This is just a step on the road and it's a, maybe it's a small step, but we're very proud of our people we backed. You know, the people we backed to extend, the people we back Innovator of the Year, we follow them for years later. We know it could be five years until you make it post this stage. We, we get that and, and most people won't. Cool. 
Yeah. Right. There is a, um, a, a, a question that's come in here around, do successful applicants get a photo op with you, Charlie? <laughs> Can you get a photo op with Charlie? <laughs> yeah, funny. Thanks Worth for that. That was right probably there. Justin Davis, was it? Or Stuart Kidd on the call. Kiefer. Kiefer? Kiefer, was it? My Kurt McMission uh, mentee. All right, you're making me blush, man. Definitely no, won't. you definitely won't get a photo with me. <laughs> That should incentivize you to put an application in. No photos with Charlie, ever. Don't worry. Awesome. Um, and Safira has just asked, it's sort of a general question, uh, is what are the other grants available with Australia? She didn't actually know about the R&D tax one. Um, so the ones off my head, obviously the R&D tax, you get 45% um, percent yeah. back of any R&D expenditure. There's the EDMG claim. So if you're exporting your IP offshore, you can claim for marketing expenses. Um, and obviously there's the couple of new ones. that They've changed that now. The EDMG used to be like the R&D tax rebate, an entitlement, like you applied for it. If you had eligible, you got the money. They've made EDMG more like a grant now. So I'd have a look at that. Hmm. Um, governments are not normally known for building good search engines, but I must say the business.gov.au grants search engine is actually very good. I look at it quite often. It's up to date. It has our grant, this one, Innovation Booster Grant on there. So business.gov.au, that's federal government website and go for the grants. It's right there on the first page. Last time I looked, which I think was yesterday, 737 different grants, all searchable. Now they're not always all open, some of them might not be for WA. Some of them are sector specific or indigenous um, founders or whatever, a mixture. But that's actually a really good, use the advanced search, really good search engine. You will find all the things like R&D tax, EMDG, this one. Investment attraction fund should be on there. It's kept up to date. It's pretty good. Um, so when I say, when someone says, you know, where, what are all the other grants? I guess point them to that awesome. website, business.gov.au and go for the grant finder. I'll just put a link to that in the chat as well. That's right. Yeah. Um, um, just, also, just thing, I've just realized I've posted to everybody that was actually supposed to go to Ken because I was just checking out something and don't go to that link because that my machine just pinged up a security threat. So please do not go to that link. <laughs> I was about oh, on this website, my machine just went bang, 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 bang. So, um, yes, just don't, don't go to that website. You took one for the team there, Dave. I did. I was like, I was just looking at the link. I was like, I'll have a look at this. And all of a sudden, I went to one link, and then my machine just went, This, we've just blocked a security threat, blah, blah, blah. Ah. Uh, yeah, if you've uh, got websites out there, just make sure your links work and that you, you haven't been compromised in any shape or form. But yeah, I've just scanned most machines, everything's fine. Um, there was a question um, that's, that's come up in the actual Q&A, which is around, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I could answer this one for you, Charlie, which was just around that, um, around signing NDAs with certain companies before they apply. But I think you've answered that in as much as you wouldn't sign an NDA with specific applications. And um, if you apply, it's essentially at your own risk, but your staff, your staff are all under confidentiality. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Very tight, as are the panel of judges. Yes. yes. Yeah. Perfect. Um, okay. So kind of we're getting at the coming up to the half past mark uh, at uh, half past eight. Are there any other questions? I think we've reached the uh, the bottom of the questions there. So good thanks, questions, uh, my goodness! So about twenty minutes of questions. Thanks for that. I was feel like I've been completely drilled. <laughs> so I didn't know all the answers, but I am the new guy. My objective, I know, in often is to make people's eyebrows go up. But if I do that in meetings, I think I'm doing the right thing. I'm just the new guy, just asking questions. <laughs> Don't know all the answers. What I'll do, like I normally do with this, is everybody, I will promote you all to panelists so that we can. <laughs> Everyone drops out immediately. Yeah. No, no, don't change my pajamas. No. That's yeah, I see no, the numbers no, dropping. No, yeah. no, so <laughs> not, well, if you are going to drop out, I just want to say a quick thank you to Charlie. Thanks for um, this, this new role that you're in. I think there's no better man for the job in there. And uh, thanks for sharing all of the, the details with the Morning Startup crew this morning. Definitely appreciate it. Thanks for the opportunity, guys. Good luck with your innovation. Brilliant. Does anyone else want to just hang on and have a chat? You're more than welcome to. While I go through the. I'll stop sharing my screen. Yeah. Okay.
Yeah, if anyone wants to jump on and ask more questions in person or just say hello, more than welcome. We'll leave it running for a bit. Otherwise, we'll see you now. Oh, so in two weeks' time, um, we have Liam from Ammo Marketing. He's going to be talking about something really cool, which um, I don't have the details yet. So stay tuned um, and just check out the meetup page. We'll email it out as usual. But uh, yeah, please join us in another two weeks. It will be another online event. Um, given the way case numbers and all that are going, I don't think we'll get a big turnout if we're to do it in person. So uh, yeah, we'll be online again and hope to see you then. I think in two weeks, we'd have pretty much been at our um, at the peak here in WA, aren't they? They reckon the way it's going. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, there's Jack. Uh, Jack, uh, do you have any details on Liam in the next two weeks? Yeah, so um, he'll be discussing culture as a growth channel. So how you can utilise existing cultures within your markets um, and, and build products and marketing around that. That's oh, terrific. Mm. Cool. Right. Anyone else? Why we've got you here? Hey, Anyone? Josh, good to see you. Any other questions? Anything else? <laughs> well, I've gone through the list once, so I can only assume everybody in here has refused to join. <laughs> all good. We will see you all got again. Jobs to get to. Exactly. I, I actually think I have a project, Charlie, that um, that we've been working on at Ammo that might be eligible for this. Finally, and me. Don't talk to me. <laughs> I can't tell you. I'm about independent. It. Cannot have a view. Okay. Okay. I'm not gonna um, ask for your opinion or anything. I'm just gonna share it with the group. Basically, um, we had this idea. Well, our designer had this idea for a bin, where you know when you um, go to pull the bin liner out of your bin, but then there's no bin liner underneath. So we sort of come up with a design like a tissue box to bring up the next bin liner and then you break it off and then your, your new bin liner is there and then you, you're on uh, along with your day. Okay. So very small, small innovation. <laughs> and this it was is when like a chicken skewer pierces technique. your bag and you get gooey, gross stuff at the bottom of your bin that's going to exactly. solve that problem. It's like, it's like to avoid that whole experience of, of, of all of okay. that. My question to you is, is it a vitamin or a painkiller? Yeah. Right. Is it a problem? It's solving a big problem, is it? Solved. No, no, no. Cool, though. Yeah. Cool idea. You can see right. people in New York having it and showing off to their friends. Yeah, there's like a $500 bin. That's, <laughs> That's right. All fancy. But then walks itself to the... <laughs> walks back again. That's right. Bin is emptied. Can you yeah. put it on the blockchain or anything cool ah, like that? There you go. <laughs> there you go. Another token. <laughs> <laughs> yes that's right that's right i'm right. going to hit the uh i'm going to hit the end button now thank you everybody for joining us and we'll see you again in two weeks thank you charlie